This is the shell of a living Nautilus. You may have seen these for sale in shops around the world and never given much thought to the animal that made them or where they live. In fact, the animal is one of the oldest living things on the planet. Its history goes back 500 million years and its living relatives are other cephalopods such as uh, squid and octopus. It's only when you look to the inside of this shell that its popular name, the chambered nautilus, becomes evident. Because inside the shell are a bunch of chambers connected via a tube. The animal lives in the open chamber and as it grows, it has to make more space, obviously, and adds more chambers to the shell. These chambers allow the Nautilus to move up and down in the water column, just like a submarine. It was, in fact, the Nautilus shell that inspired the name of Jules Verne's submarine in his book 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, and also the names of the first American nuclear submarines. It's perhaps not surprising, then, that the first thing that often comes to mind when people hear the word Nautilus is submarine. The animal itself has around 90 specialized tentacles and it lives at great depth between 200 and 500 meters typically, um, almost always in complete darkness. And that of course is a wonderful way of staying away from it, the normal reef predators that might be a, a threat to it. And it finds its food in darkness through the most extraordinary chemical sensors. The family tree of the living Nautilus goes back a long way. These fossil ones are between 40 and 50 million years old. The Cretaceous ones are around 100 million years old. And these Jurassic examples are almost 200 million years old. And even back uh, towards 300 million years ago, this, the shape of the Nautilus shell was very similar. It's only when we get to between three and four hundred million years ago that there's a clue to some of the early Nautilus shapes. You've guessed it. The first Nautilus shells were straight. And it was only later that they curled up. What's interesting is that they lived in such profusion that in some places like Morocco, they make up an entire mountainside. Because of their chambered structure, they were able to move off the seafloor and were one of the first animals to dominate the midwater environment. Remember, this was before fish, and they grew to enormous sizes, as you can see from this scenario where we've inserted a modern day diver into their environment. What's uh, really ironic is that this animal, whose shell design is almost not changed at all for 500 million years, was the only one to have survived. I wonder what Darwin would have said about that. Because here we have a creature that didn't change at all and is one of the few to survive. Since the dawn of civilization, this iconic spiral form has inspired artists, designers, and architects. There are relics that show uh, the Nautilus fossils were adorned in ancient Egypt. From the 15th to the 19th centuries, Nautilus shells were prized as mysterious objects, their source unknown. They found their way into every cabinet of curiosities in the world and were adorned with gold sometimes to honor the most important guests at banquets. Some of these were in fact found in almost every royal collection. Nautilus has survived whatever the world has thrown at it for more than 500 million years, persisting even as other forms such as dinosaurs and ichthyosaurs have disappeared. Now, however, some believe that it could be extinct within this generation. My new book um, and this exhibition at the Dorset County Museum is meant to celebrate the long prehistory of Nautilus. The scientists who researched it, discovered it, documented it, and Nautilus's continuous influence on our thinking and human culture. And of course, the realities of its life today. 
The most recently discovered nautilus species um, have been grouped under the genus um, Allonautilus. And one of the species um, with a distinctive outer fuzzy layer, the so-called fuzzy nautilus, um, has only been seen twice in the last 30 years. Another species, the one illustrated on the cover of the book, um, has never been seen alive. It is the most elusive known animal on the planet. We are donating 100% uh, of the proceeds of this book to Nautilus Research and we hope that one of the projects will be our ability to find this totally unknown Nautilus. There are many things to be learned about Nautilus. We hope that you'll join us on this journey and for a start, enjoy the exhibition.